Well hello everybody. Today I'm going to be making some biscuit caramel and chocolate bars like Twix bars if you know what they are and uh, they're actually not particularly complicated to make. I, I looked at lots of recipes and saw lots of videos and I've decided I'm going to use a recipe uh, created by Anna Olsen of Oh Yum YouTube channel and uh, I'm going to vary it very slightly but that's uh, mainly to do with how we treat the chocolate basically. So I, as I said it's quite easy to do and we start off by preheating the oven to 180 celsius that's 160 celsius with a fan 350 fahrenheit and I've lined an 8 inch square cake tin with parchment paper. I've greased the tin and then lined it with parchment paper so the paper sticks to the sides of the tin. And so I go on to the ingredients and for uh, the biscuit base I have um, 113 grams, one stick of uh, unsalted butter which is uh, softened, it's been out sitting out in the room for a while um, it's not too soft but it's, it's softened. Then I have uh, 100 grams, half a cup of caster sugar or granulated sugar you could use. I have 190 grams, one cup plus three tablespoons plus one teaspoon of plain flour. That's based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup. I have, uh, I'm going to use the yolk only of one medium egg. That would be large in the USA and I have uh, a pinch of salt that's for the biscuit base and then for the caramel I have 80 millilitres a third of a cup of water 150 grams uh, three quarters of a cup of caster sugar or granulated sugar I have 100 grams a third of a cup of condensed milk 100 grams a third of a cup of golden syrup you could use um, corn syrup if you don't have golden syrup. I have 60 grams which is four and a half tablespoons of butter unsalted. I have five millilitres, one teaspoon of vanilla extract and three grams, half a teaspoon of salt. And then for the chocolate to coat um, the biscuit and the caramel in, I have a pound of chocolate and I've divided that three quarters of a pound and a quarter of a pound. So 113 grams of chocolate, milk chocolate there, and uh, 341 grams um, of milk chocolate here. Basically, this is going to be melted and this is going to be stirred into the melted chocolate. So I don't need those for... Um, several hours yet so I'll put those to one side and I'll put the caramel stuff to one side but we'll use that in a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the um, biscuit base and to do that I'm going to put the butter into a bowl and I'm simply going to Put the sugar in and mix it around until it's blended. I'm not going to worry about making it light and fluffy or anything like that because um, it doesn't need it. Simply mix it until the sugar is incorporated into the butter and that's good enough like that. So then I'm going to put my egg yolk in And I'm going to simply blend that in as well. And then I'm going to add the flour and the pinch of salt. 
and I'm going to again just mix it and blend it I don't need to make this into um, a smooth dough it's going to be crumbly maybe some loose flour still showing so that actually doesn't look too bad so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip that into my cake tin and I'm going to spread it around to get it fairly level and get it pressed up against the sides I'm going to press that down to compact it And that's fairly well compacted but not pressed too firmly I don't need it too firm I don't think so then I'm going to put that into the oven and I'm going to bake it for 15 minutes and while it's baking we're going to make the caramel because we're going to pour the caramel onto uh, the biscuit base while it's still hot while, while the biscuit base is still hot so I'll put this into the oven and then we'll do the caramel I'm going to put the water into a saucepan and then I'm going to add the sugar and the condensed milk and I'm going to heat those on a high heat stirring all the time until the mixture starts to boil and I have my instant read thermometer ready because I need to check temperatures during the process of making this caramel and also during the making of the the chocolate covering as well so I put these uh, three ingredients onto the heat and then uh, bring them to the boil So that's just starting to boil so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in my golden syrup and then I'm going to turn the heat down to a medium heat and I, but I'm going to continue stirring and I'm going to cook this stirring all the time until the temperature reaches 110 Celsius um, which is if I check my notes 229-230 Fahrenheit so I'll just check the temperature now just to tell you what it is it's actually 88-89 Celsius at the moment And as you can see it bubbles and foams quite a bit which is why you keep stirring it My, I could have used a slightly larger saucepan but I think this will be fine I'll test the temperature there's 110 now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put my butter in and I'm going to continue to stir that and this time I want it to uh, cook until it reaches 115 degrees Celsius which is 239 Fahrenheit
So as you can see it's just reached 115 now. So I'm going to turn the heat off. And now I'm going to sprinkle in my salt and stir that in. And also my vanilla extract. And that's the caramel made basically. That's now ready to go onto the top of our biscuit base. So my biscuit base is cooked now and it's hot. It's just straight out of the oven. So I'm going to simply pour my caramel over the top. like that and I'm just going to tip the tin slightly so that we spread it all the way over and I'm actually going to set that to one side now and I'm going to leave it to cool completely and set up and that's going to take about three hours so I'll come back once this is completely set up we'll take it out of the tin and cut it into the pieces we need and then we'll temper our chocolate and coat the the Twix biscuits. So it's been over three hours and I've allowed my um, biscuit base with the caramel on to set and I've taken it out of the cake tin and I've actually cut it in half in one direction and I've measured out some marks. Um, I'm going to cut, I think you can get of, of this half uh, size, you can get 10 across each of about two centimeters. I've got nine here because I've measured slightly inaccurately, but I'm simply going to cut them down like that and transfer them for the time being to a baking tray. And with them cut out like that I'm just going to put those to one side while we deal with the chocolate. And for the chocolate I'm going to take the um, three quarters of the pound I'm going to put it into my pan. This is the pan of a, a Ban Marie or a double boiler. Now if you don't have a double boiler uh, it's fine. You can use a saucepan and a bowl. So basically you would have a saucepan of water, um, maybe about an inch deep the water, which you're going to simmer and you place your bowl on the top so that it's not touching the water and you keep that simmering and you stir the chocolate until it's melted and I want the chocolate to reach when it's melted about 44, 45, 46 uh, Celsius which is 112 to 115 Fahrenheit something like that and once it's melted we will take it off the heat and we'll add the remaining chocolate to bring the temperature down uh, until that chocolate is melted. And if I need more, I will add more. Um, and then we slightly raise the temperature again and it's ready to use. So I will just melt this and um, you don't need to see me do that. That just goes on the stove and I'll stir it the whole time. Then I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. So my chocolate has melted and it's at uh, 46 degrees so I'm going to take half of the remaining chocolate and I'm going to tip it in and I'm going to stir that until that melts and I want to reduce the temperature 
to about 27 degrees which is 81 27 celsius which is 81 fahrenheit and so once this first batch of chocolate has melted i put the remaining the remaining chocolate in and melt that as well and if any of it doesn't melt you can always take it out once you've reached the temperature you you need so I'll just test that temperature And that's at 36 and I want to go down to 27 so I'm going to put in most of the remainder and stir that so I'll put the remaining chocolate in because it's still not down to the 27 degrees and that's reached 27 now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that back onto my pan of hot water and I'm going to stir it and I can put it on the heat if I want to but I'm going to stir it until it comes back up to between 30 and 31 celsius which is 86 to 88 fahrenheit so that's now at um, 31 degrees so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, each of the biscuits and I'm going to dip it and place it onto another parchment lined baking sheet and this can get a bit messy but we'll see how we go And I will do the same with all of them. I coated uh, the biscuits and caramel in the chocolate and uh, then I left them on the tray to set then I put them into the fridge just for 10 minutes now I should say that if the chocolate begins to cool down when you're uh, coating the uh, the biscuits and such like you can increase the temperature but you still don't want to go above the uh, 31 degrees Celsius. If you temper this chocolate right, when you actually pick the chocolate up, it won't melt in your hand, basically. If you increase the temperature above 31 degrees, um, or, or don't follow the instructions at any particular time, it won't work in quite the same way. So, this is what they look like now. And I got 18 out of mine, and I've cut one in half so you can see inside it there with the, the biscuit and the caramel. So I'll have a taste of this one. Oh. 
very very good the chocolate was tempered very well the caramel nice and sweet and the biscuit has a slight crunch to it maybe not quite as firm I think if I'd have uh, baked the biscuit for maybe one minute or two minutes longer it would have been just that bit firmer um, and more crunchy but perfect as they are I have to say so that's going to be it for this video and I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel in the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an I that you can click on and that will take you to a link for this recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future so until then happy baking